everybody. Thanks so much for joining me for story time today. And also much thanks to Albert Whitman and Company, Macmillan and Simon and Schuster for allowing us to share the books we're going to read today. We really appreciate it. Let's start with our hello song. Well, hello everybody, can you touch your nose? Touch your nose, touch your nose. Hello everybody, can you touch your nose? Touch your nose. Well, hello everybody, can you touch your head? Touch your head, touch your head. Hello everybody, can you touch your head? Touch your head. Well, hello everybody, can you wave hello? Wave hello, wave hello. Hello everybody, can you wave hello? Wave hello. Thank you, friends, good job, I'm so glad you're here. Well, you can see that I have some silly monsters up here on our board today. And today is kind of an october -y theme. We have Halloween coming up, but it's not all Halloween. It's just kind of some fun and silly stories. And we're going to jump right in and start with one of my favorite books. It's called Love Monster and the Last Chocolate. And this is by Rachel Bright. This monster, hello, Love Monster was just getting back from vacation, and although it was a little bit exciting to be home, he was sad to leave his adventures behind. But wait, what was this? A box of chocolates just sitting there waiting to be found? Love Monster couldn't believe it. You see, everybody knows that monsters seriously love chocolate, especially this monster. His mouth started to water just thinking about what might be inside. Perhaps there'd be a peanut butter crunch or even an extra fizz banger sherbet. Or maybe, just maybe, there'd be a double chocolate strawberry swirl. That was Love Monster's absolute favorite. But then he had a thought that he just couldn't unthink. Hmm, he should probably share the chocolates with his friends, but what if there weren't enough? Or what if someone took the one he wanted the most? Or worst of all, what if the only one left for him was the coffee one. Ugh. Everybody knows monsters hate the coffee ones, especially this monster. Ugh. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that after thinking all of these thoughts, Love Monster decided that it would be safer and kinder and better for everyone if he kept the hot chocolates just for himself. Do you think that was the right choice? Let's see what happens. So he went into his house and so did the box of chocolates without a word or a whisper to anyone. Love Monster couldn't wait. Oh, how his mouth watered. But just as he went to lift the lid, he had a sort of queasy, squeezy feeling in his heart. It was the feeling a monster gets when he knows he's about to do something that he shouldn't. And so before you could say, please pass me the truffle surprise, he burst out of his house and ran as fast as his toes could carry him to find his friends. And when he did, in a very out of breath and a bit shouty voice, he said, I got back from my vacation and I found some chocolates and I was going to keep them all for myself, but then I realized I wanted to share them with you and I don't even want a single one. Well, maybe just one. And do you know what his friend said? Silly monster, just open the box. Oh, look, he opened the box and look what's inside. It's one chocolate. To Love Monster, we missed you so much. We saved our last chocolate, your favorite, 
because you're our favorite monster. You see, sometimes it's when you stop and you think about others that you start to find out just how much they think of you. The end. And look, it says, welcome home. Are they having a party? Yeah. I love that one. And I love how Love Monster wanted to share and they were thinking of him. And it's fun to share the things that we have. It makes us feel good, too. Um, I have up here some monsters. Can you count how many monsters we have up here? They're kind of silly, aren't they? Let's count them together. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. And I think you're going to know this next song we're going to sing. I may have changed one or two words, but I think you'll be able to catch on. So hopefully you'll sing with me, okay? Five silly monsters jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. How many are left? One, two, three, four silly monsters jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. Three silly monsters jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. Two silly monsters jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. How many are left? One silly monster jumping on the bed. It fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more silly monsters jumping on the bed. Good job. Thanks for singing with me today, friends. Nice job. It's fun to have silly monsters to play with and sing about, isn't it? It makes this October a fun time. So when we're thinking about October, we think about things that are Halloween, and we're thinking about monsters and silly things, sometimes we think about making some scary faces. And so the title of our next book is called, Can You Make a Scary Face? And this one, I need your help when I'm reading. You'll have some jobs to do as I'm reading along, so pay attention and see if you can do all the things that we are in this book. Can you make a scary face? Hey, you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Stand up. No, I changed my mind. Sit down. <laughs> uh, no, I changed my mind again. Stand up. Okay, are you ready? Let's pretend. Pretend you have a tiny bug on your nose. Wiggle it off. Can you wiggle your little tiny nose to get that bug off? Hmm, <laughs> it tickles. Wiggle your nose and laugh. Whoops, the tiny tickly bug flew into your mouth. Blow it out, come on, blow it out. Can you blow harder? Wait, the tiny tickly bug is out of your mouth and now it's in your shirt. The only way to get it out is to do the chicken dance. Can you dance around? Good, dance faster. That tiny tickly bug is stuck in your shirt? Don't worry. Pretend there's a giant hungry frog coming to eat that tiny tickly bug that's stuck in your shirt. Rub it. Uh-oh. There really is a giant hungry frog. Can you scare him away? <gasps> Help! Make a scary face now! Yikes, not that scary. Wait up, giant hungry frog, I'm still scared. Did you make a scary face and scare that ladybug away? <laughs> I hope you like doing that one, that's a fun one. Yeah, and so we have all these things that we do in October besides making scary faces and dressing up and thinking about silly monsters and things like that. And I have another song that I think you're gonna know 
And so let's see if you can sing this one with me, okay? It goes, Old MacDonald had a haunted house. A haunted house? E-I-E-I-O. And in that house he had a bat. E-I-E-I-O. With a flap flap here and a flap flap there. Here a flap, there a flap, everywhere a flap flap. Old MacDonald had a haunted house. E-I-E-I-O. And in that house he had an owl. E-I-E-I-O. With a hoot hoot here and a hoot hoot there. Here a hoot, there a hoot, everywhere a hoot hoot. Old MacDonald had a haunted house. E-I-E-I-O. And in that house he had a mouse. E-I-E-I-O. With a squeak squeak here and a squeak squeak there. Here a squeak, there a squeak, everywhere a squeak squeak. Old MacDonald had a haunted house. E-I-E-I-O. And in that house he had a spider. E-I-E-I-O. With a creak, creak here and a creak, creak there. Here a creak, there a creak, everywhere a creak, creak. Old MacDonald had a haunted house. E-I-E-I-O. And in that house he had a cat. E-I-E-I-O. With meow, meow here and a meow, meow there. Here a meow, there a meow, everywhere a meow, meow. Old MacDonald had a haunted house. E-I-E-I-O. And in that house he had a ghost, E-I-E-I-O, with a boo here and a boo there. Here a boo, there a boo, everywhere a boo, boo. Old MacDonald had a haunted house, E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> Good job. Wasn't that a silly Old MacDonald version that we say, just for Halloween in the haunted house? It's a fun thing to do in October, isn't it? So when we're talking about scary faces, what's something that we have around our house, sometimes as a decoration, that we carve, sometimes they have scary faces on them. Do you know? Yeah, a pumpkin. I have here a little chart here about how pumpkins grow. Maybe you've grown a pumpkin at your house or you've gone and picked a pumpkin. Have you thought about how those pumpkins grow? Well, we have our big pumpkin. What do we have to do if we want to put a scary face on our pumpkin? What do we have to do first? Right. We're going to carve off the top. A grown-up will help you. And what do you have to do? You have to clean it out. You scoop out all the stuff, the innards. And what's in there? There's some seeds. And I know at my house, we like to roast some of those seeds and eat them up. But if you don't roast and eat them, you can plant those seeds. And those seeds make a pumpkin sprout. And it's just a little tiny plant, a little sprout, and that sprout goes into a pumpkin plant. And then the plant gets bigger and it spreads and it makes a vine. And the vine grows and makes a big orange flower. And then the flower changes into a green pumpkin. Have you seen green pumpkins? Those are ones that they just pick a little early. And then that green pumpkin, as it gets older, it changes into the orange pumpkin that we can carve our jack-o'-lanterns from. And that's a fun thing, even if you don't carve it, it's fun to have a pumpkin as decoration for the fall and for Halloween. So that's our little pumpkin life cycle. And I have here our last book, we're running out of time here today, and it's called It's a Pumpkin! And we'll be thinking about that pumpkin life cycle when we're reading this. They found it in the middle of the road. What is it? Field Mouse asked. It looks kind of familiar. I don't know, said Squirrel. It's a mystery. I'll tell you what it is, said Field Mouse. It's in the way. They pushed it over so that it could roll. It rolled and it rolled and it rolled all the way to a possum's nap spot. Bonk. Sorry, said Field Mouse. What is it? A possum asked. That's just what we were wondering, said Squirrel. A possum squinted as he looked at it. Then he sat on it. Hmm, he said. It's a chair. They all tried it. Pretty comfy, said a possum. Disagree, said Squirrel. I don't think it's a chair, said Field Mouse. Of course it's not a chair, called the raccoon from the window. So what is it, said a possum. Is it for eating, guessed Squirrel. Well, now that you mention it, said Raccoon, wait right there. A moment later, she came out with a big plate of cookies. Get up from that chair, she told the possum. 
I thought you said it wasn't a chair, he said. It's not. Raccoon set the plate on top. See, it's a table. A table, said Field Mouse. Are you sure? Please have some cookies, said Raccoon. I made too many. Opossum went to get cider. The rabbit family joined them and the woodchuck started, woodchuck too, and the party started. This is fun, said Woodchuck, but you call that a table? Actually, said Squirrel, we don't know what it is. I know one thing we can do with it, said Woodchuck. Come on. Woodchuck set it next to the door to his burrow. See, it makes a nice doorstep. They carried the cookies and the cider through the open door and the party went on. The chipmunk stopped by and even three chickadees. This is great, said Squirrel. We never have parties. Field Mouse was just pouring another cup of cider when the door went slam. Everyone turned to see the skunk standing there with a sly smile. Skunk, said Woodchuck, why did you move the doorstop? I happen to know, said Skunk, that it's not a doorstop. No kidding, said Squirrel, but what is it? I've seen it at people's houses, replied Skunk. It's a lamp. A lamp, said everyone. I'll show you, she said. We, who's got a knife and a big spoon? And we'll need a candle. It made a very nice lamp. It had a jolly face and it flickered and it made them all want to dance spooky dances. The party went on. But are you sure it's a lamp, Field Mouse said Skunk? What if someone, whoops, said Woodchuck. Oh, knocks it over, said Field Mouse. The crowd looked at the broken mess. What is it now? whispered Raccoon. One of the rabbit twins sniffed at the pieces. I think it could be pie, she said, like our grandma used to make. <gasps> yes, said her brother, a big pie. We can make it. Everyone helped. Squirrel sighed after he finished his pie slice. Whatever it was, he said, it was tasty. Don't say was, said Chickadee, it's not all gone yet. He hopped over to a bowl that Skunk had filled with the gluck while carving the lamp. He picked out some of the seeds. I bet it would be delicious to roast these. By spring, everyone forgot about the party and it. They were busy doing other things. But then one morning, a possum was scurrying home and he saw a new plant. Everyone watched it all summer. It's a big plant, said Raccoon. A few weeks later said, it has a flower. And then it came and saw that it was growing something else. Is it a watermelon, said Woodchuck? I don't think so, said Chipmunk. It's too small. It's getting bigger, said the rabbit. It's getting orange, said the chickadee. It looks very familiar, said the field mouse. I know what it is, said the squirrel. What, said a possum, what is it? It's time, answered Squirrel. It's time for a party. And he was right. Are they gonna start it all over again? I think so, yes. It was fun that they didn't know what the pumpkin was. <laughs> so we have a little chant here to help us remember all the things that we have fun doing with a pumpkin. And it goes like this. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin bread. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin head. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin pie. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin eyes. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin cake. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin shake. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin stew. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin boo. <laughs> and that was it. Good job, friends. Well, I'm so glad that you joined me for story time today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your October. 